skinny wretch like you has come far enough! Just for a short reign over this barren valley. Sattva Lingji of New Mount Sumeru, the warden of this rat. After the great sage's passing, his six senses were scattered across the mortal realm. This thieving rat chanced upon one of them, yet hindered by his meager might, he could not absorb its power. Thus he schemed with wicked intent, a victim of his deceit. I had my head taken by him. A sense requires such a grand container to release its power. I should bear the blame for his reign of havoc upon this ridge again. <sighs> Through your valor and sagacity, order has been restored. 
You are the sole worthy one to keep it. Please keep it secure in my stead. Men, beasts, Buddhas, Yaoguais. Each of them bears a distinct root from birth, superior and inferior. None should disturb what's decided. Am I right, Sun Wukong? With the wind and sand you've endured here, did you reach the forgotten kingdom at the end of the land? Did you find the clash of stones and the fall of Tiger's Acolyte? If you shut your ears and heed only your inner murmur, I fear the more you yearn for flawless endings, the further you'll stray from the path. Rats and cats. Neither grasped their destiny, and yet neither admitted it. Listen closely, young one. Their complaints ride upon the wind.
Spared him, punished him, avoided him, eluded him. Master's grace taught, disciple's plot sought. <laughs> His golden long staff meant nothing once mortal compassions took root. But his at first too could fall in this way. On a white deer or a green bull, the celestial courtiers mount. On a cyan lion or a white elephant, the bodhisattvas ride. This great beetle, too, could be someone's mount. They could have put their belief in anything, yet they chose a Yaogwai. Those who deny the rules must suffer the wrath. No wind wrought such destruction here. The Samadhi wind brought only malice here. Vajras and Arhats before the yellow wind shivered. Mounts of Bodhisattvas, a lion cyan and an elephant white in fear quivered. A wicked Yaogwai of fierce might followed a discerning master. It was his blessing, but also became his curse. They say Yaogwais prey on men, yet men prey on men too, only more ruthlessly. A fair trade in that tiny well? How does it differ from the trades out in the world? 